Children's Hour. In this series, we're talking about fairy tales and fantasies. And in this episode, we're talking about tasty treats. Shall we ask Miss Marva if she could read us some stories and do some activities about some really tasty treats? Let's watch a video. Thank you. 
Let's craft. What you need? Glue, spices, container, spoon, paper, scissors, markers or crayons, paintbrush, pipe cleaners, pom poms, buttons, jewels, ribbons, and other decorations. Hi, friends. We're doing tasty tales today, and our two activities are gingerbread activities. We're going to make gingerbread play doh, and we're going to make gingerbread paint. So, the things that you'll need are liquid glue, some form of spice. If you don't have ginger, cinnamon works well, pumpkin spice will work. Any spice is okay for your gingerbread paint. I actually use a lot of cinnamon because it's a nice brown color too. So you'll need some of that to mix with your glue. You'll need a container and something to stir with to make your gingerbread paint. You'll need paper, scissors, and something to draw with to make your gingerbread person uh, to make their shape and cut it. And then you'll need things to decorate with. Um, I have some gems and jewels, some flowers, pom-poms, anything could be used. Um, also, buttons might work well, too. Now, for the other activity, so that's gingerbread paint. For the other activity, gingerbread Play-Doh is simply adding spice to a salt dough recipe. So you'll need white flour or whole wheat if you have it, doesn't matter, whatever kind of flour your grown-up has in the kitchen that they're willing to let you use. So flour, salt, water, two measuring cups. You'll need a cup measuring cup and a half cup measuring cup. You'll need something to mix your Play-Doh in you, and then <clears throat> it's up to you what you want to do with that Play-Doh. I have two suggestions. You could either take your um, gingerbread Play-Doh and roll out cookies and so use things like cookie cutters and rollers and things like that or you could make gingerbread houses and use things that you have left over from decorating your gingerbread boy to make your gingerbread house. So I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to that point. But for now, let's start with making our gingerbread paint. I used to be a teacher and we every Christmas would make Blop. There you go. Would make ginger, have a whole week of gingerbread stuff. And we would cook gingerbread. We would decorate gin, with gingerbread. We'd draw gingerbread people. We read at least 10 different gingerbread stories. So I love gingerbread. This is just liquid glue, as much paint as you want to make. <clears throat> so I just did a big glop of liquid glue. You could use clear glue. You could use this kind of glue because this will dry clear. Then I'm going to add in some spice. I'm going to add quite a bit because I like that it smells really good and it makes the paint look better if you use more spice. So I would say about two or three tablespoons if you want to measure. Otherwise, I did about a quarter of the um, glue that I have down here. So and then you slowly stir, especially if you have a small container. I kind of have a small container. Stir that up and really get it mixed up together. At first, it's going to be really gloppy and you'll think, oh, it's not going to mix up, but it starts to slowly combine with the glue and if you need to you could also put a little bit of water in there if it's just super chunky but for right now there we go get all of that mixed together okay so when all your, if you've got a clear container, you can kind of look at the bottom and see, is it still white or is it all brown? So mine's pretty close. 
I'm going to give it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine gin stirs. And then I'm going to let it wait a minute. Uh oh, mess alert. Put that in there. Now I'm going to let that sit for a couple minutes while I make the gingerbread boy shape. Now, you can do it in either order. So you could actually make your shapes that you want to paint with your gingerbread paint and then make your paint. Whatever works best at your house. For doing a gingerbread boy shape, it could be boy or girl, really, shape, you're going to do half a circle, and then you're going to do a rectangle going outward. That's the arm. You're going to go down a little bit. That's the body. And then you're going to do a rectangle that goes kind of to the side. And we're doing this cut on the fold. So that means when we open this up, we will ha we will be a will be symmetrical, meaning that both sides should look the same. So around. The other thing, once you've cut it apart, you can always go back and tidy it up a little bit. You can draw. Once you know how to do this on the fold, you can uh, figure out other like animals or whatever to make too. So you could have gingerbread animals, heart shapes. It's pretty fun. Okay. So, there's the drawing I did. You can see the lines. When you open it up, yeah, that worked out pretty well. I like that. So, there's my gingerbread person. Now, I'm going to take that person and move these things out of the way. <coughs> and use one of my brushes. So, this, these brushes will work fine. You just need to soak them. If they get crunchy with with glue, you just need to soak them. Now, this is pretty thick. You could almost spread this with a spoon. See, I could almost do this. And it's kind of fun. I did this with cocoa powder once, too. And then I had cocoa smelling paintings. So you could spread it also with a craft knife, with, not a craft knife, with um, a craft stick. And like I said, if that's too thick for you, add some water. I'm fine with it the way it is. You can paint to the edge. The reason I'm not painting to my edge is I don't want to get stuff all over the table. And I'm going pretty fast. If I were doing this at home, I'd take more time and I'd make sure I got everything perfect. I'm just doing this to give you an idea of what it will look like. Okay, so. First part of that is to go ahead and fill that all with your glue, your spicy paint. Then you can look at it and think about what you have to decorate it with. I, <clears throat> I think I am going to use Fancy eyes, and I'm going to put flowers on my gingerbread person. I kind of like that. Oh, I guess I'm putting one flower. Um, you could also cut up, oops, cut pipe cleaners into smaller bits and use them to make buttons, or maybe cut a bigger one for a big old smile. There you go. You could use wiggle eyes, pom-poms. There, we'll put a pom-pom on there. So see, there you go. And it's all up to you how to decorate it. Let's read a book. Friends, I have only one gingerbread book for you, but it is a really 
good one. It's called The Gingerbread Girl. Now, if you go to your library, you can find so many awesome books about gingerbread. I could have sit, sat all day reading gingerbread books to you, but I chose one of my favorites. So I hope you love Gingerbread Girl as much as I do. You may remember the sad story of the gingerbread boy. He ran away from the lonely old woman who baked him, as well as many other hungry characters. His dash through life was ended in one greedy gulp by a sly fox pretending to help him cross a river. This is the story of his younger, smarter sister. A full year had passed since the lonely old woman and the lonely old man had lost their gingerbread boy to that devious fox. They were even lonelier than before. Let's bake again, suggested the old man one morning. But what if the same thing happens, cried the old woman. I couldn't bear the loss. Let's make a girl this time and decorate her with candies. Surely a sweet little girl wouldn't run away, answered the man. So they mixed up the dough, rolled it, cut it down. Oh, cut it out. They dressed it with as many candies as they could fit, complementing the cookie with an amazing hairdo, completing the cookie with an amazing hairdo made of licorice whips. She is sweet, gasped the woman as she slid the cookie sheet into the oven. While the lonely old woman and the lonely old man stood watch by the oven, they talked, remembering their gingerbread short gingerbread boy short life. Ah, oh, he never should have run away. He never should have trusted that fox. And as the new cookie baked, her mind woke up and she heard it everything. Sweet or not, she thought, things will be different this time. When it was time for the cookie to be done, the old woman carefully, ever so carefully, cracked open the oven door to peek. Bam! One out jumped the gingerbread cookie running towards the door. The little old woman screamed, stop! Stop! And the little old man came running. But the cookie was already out the door and headed down the same path that her brother had traveled. Here we go, whispered the gingerbread girl. And the man and the woman chased after her, but she sang, I'll run and I'll run with a leap and a twirl. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread girl. As the gingerbread girl dashed along the path, she came to a group of farmers working in the fields. The aroma of fresh, baked gingerbread caught their attention. Wait! The hungry farmer shouted and began to run after the gingerbread girl. She laughed and she called, Hey, farmers, don't bother. Like my brother, I'm fast. Run all you want, but I've learned from his past. I'll run and I'll run with a leap and a twirl. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread girl! Farther down the road, Pig came into view. As Gingerbread Girl grew closer, her candy sparkled in the sunlight. The pig squealed with joy and tried to take a bite, but Gingerbread Girl was too fast. She left over him singing, I can leap past Pig, eh? Like all of the others, the story, will, the story will not end like that of my brothers. I'll run and I'll run with a leap and a twirl. You can't catch me, I'm the Gingerbread Girl. On down the path, she came upon an artist, a masterpiece good enough to eat, the artist whispered, and reached out to scoop up the gingerbread girl. With some fancy footwork, the gingerbread girl zipped past, laughing. I can outrun this artist like I outran the pig. I'm one smart cookie, despite this wild wig. I'll run and I'll run with a leap and a twirl. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread girl. Farther along, the gingerbread girl passed a cow with her calf, who mooed happily. Mama, I want a cookie to go with my milk. 
But when the cow tried to catch the gingerbread girl, she soon found herself running behind, listening to the gingerbread girl call, Chase if you want, I'm faster than you, although you have four feet and I've only two. I'll run and I'll run with a, weep, with a leap and a twirl, you can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread girl. Up ahead, a dog walker was crossing the path with three dogs, and the dogs barked happily, seeing a tasty treat headed their way. But as the gingerbread girl sped past, the group was soon in line with the others hearing, You're joining the chase, the more the merrier, but no one can stop me, not hound, not terrier. I'll run and I'll run with a weep, with a leap and a twirl. You can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread girl. Now the path ran right past a school. The children were out for recess and feeling quite hungry. Shouts of cookie were heard across the playground. The gingerbread girl waved to them all as they joined the chase with their teachers and sang, I know that it's snack time and you want a sweet. Come follow along and you'll soon have a treat. I'll run and I'll run with a leap and a twirl. You can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread girl. Finally, the gingerbread girl came to the same river her brother had tried to cross. Who should be waiting for, for her but the same devious fox? Hello, my pretty, crooned the fox. I was a friend of your brother's. It looks like trouble runs in the family. Do let me help you across the river. Just jump onto my tail. The gingerbread girl shivered and then sang in a, nearly a whisper. Do I have your promise for a safe ride to shore? You won't drop me or eat me? That's all I implore. The fox chuckled. <laughs> I promise my sweet little tidbit. And the gingerbread girl gingerly climbed on the fox's tail. The instant the gingerbread girl climbed on, the fox dove into the water ready for a fabulous feast. Ooh, the water's so deep. Moved by back, he insisted, thinking the cute cookie was even dumber than her brother. Anyone could tell by looking at her that she was no airhead. The gingerbread girl did what she was told. That's a good little girl, the fox said with a snicker. Oh my, the water's deeper now. Now, I moved my head. No sooner had he spoken those words than the gingerbread girl leapt to his head, pulling off a strand of her own leathery licorice hair. With the expertise of a ranch hand, she triple looped it around the fox's snout and tied it off with a half-hitch knot. You're right, she whispered in the fox's ear. I am good. The fox snarled and struggled and strained, thrashing about, but the gingerbread girl hung on, turning him back toward the crowd. Riding the fox like a bucking bronco, the gingerbread girl whisked past, singing, He'll run and he'll run with a leap and a twirl. Come follow me. I'm the gingerbread girl. And the awestruck crowd followed all the way back to the lonely old woman and the lonely old man's house. The gingerbread girl rode into the kitchen, secured the fox, jumped onto the table, and she measured and mixed with a leap and a twirl, singing, I'll bake you some more. I'm the gingerbread girl. The old woman and man quickly joined in to help, having a hungry, happy household to feed. From that moment on, of course, they were never lonely again. And what of the fox? The gingerbread girl was eventually able to teach him some manners, using gingerbread crumbs for treats. Most days you could see them riding across the countryside and hear a small voice drifting in the breeze. We'll run and we'll run with a leap and a twirl. I outfax the fox. I'm the gingerbread girl. Let's craft.
What you need. White flour. Spices. Salt. Water. Measuring cups. One half cup and one cup. A bowl. Cookie cutters. This is gingerbread Play-Doh. For gingerbread Play-Doh, you start off with a cup of flour. Like I said before, any kind of flour is okay. Check with your grown-up to see what they have. This is white all-purpose flour. It works great. That's what I've always used. But wheat would be okay too, and it would give it an, a pretty color. So don't be afraid to change the recipe up a little bit. All right. That is a cup of flour. Okay. And then we're going to put in half as much, so that's half a cup of salt. This Play-Doh is not tasty to eat. I have had friends at school eat this Play-Doh and one of them threw up. So I'm just letting you know, don't taste this. It's gross. All right, half a cup of salt. <coughs> now I'm going to add in my spices and I just put as many as I can in. So a half a cup to a quarter cup of spice, whatever you have at home. If it's less, it's still okay, but uh, the more spice, the better it smells. So I'm just gonna use the rest of my spice container. Mmm, that's gonna smell good. Alrighty, and then I'm going to use the spoon. Actually, I don't need to, I can use this. I'm going to use something to stir with thought it was the spoon, but actually I had this plastic knife, so I'm just mixing all the things together. Whatever you use to do that with is okay. A stick, whatever. So I just want to get all of the spice and the flour all mixed together. I want it all to be the same color. I don't want there to be a lot of one color showing up because when I add the water, it will be harder to mix things. So get all those dry ingredients really stirred together. You might have to have everybody at the table take a turn. Okay, so this is pretty good. There's still some lumps of flour, but basically all the colors in here are looking good and mixed together. Now I'm taking water. The water part of this is tricky. What you do is you put some water in and then you have to keep checking until it's just right. So I'm going to start with half a cup of water. I'll make a whole kind of an indentation in the middle and I'll put water in that, the half cup. Okay. This is just regular old water from the tap, so I pour that in and stir that up. Now, I bet all of you have had Play-Doh before, and what this is is kind of like cinnamon Play-Doh, too. So I'm mixing and mixing and mixing. It takes a while for the water to hydrate all of that delicious flour and stuff. Ugh, smells so good right now. Yummy. So I'm going to pull that off of there. At this point, I'm going to use my hands in here and see how close it is to being Play Doh. What you're trying to do is get all the water mixed in there. So you want all the water sucked in there. This is actually doing pretty well with half cup. It changes where you are. You might need a little more water or you might find that half cup was too much and you can add a little more flour to it if you need to to get it to be a dough. I think this is pretty good so I'm putting the top back on this. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and dump this out. You're, you're going to want to do this in a place where it's easy to clean up and that it's okay with your grown-ups, all right? The kitchen's a great place to do it if you have a nice spot to do cooking on. All right. So I'm going to pull all the extra little bits off the edge. I'm going to dump it all down there. And now we're going to knead it. Squeeze it. Push it down. Get up as much of that dry stuff as you can. Just kind of get all of that working together. And I'm just using my hands to do it. You can also knead it this way. I'm going to stand up for a second and show you. Like that. That. That's called kneading. You could do that too. So once your dough looks kind of like Play-Doh, and I think this is doing pretty good, I'm going to move the extra bits out of the way. So at this point, you can decide what you want to do with your dough. You could make use the cookies and the cookie cutters, and if you make cookies with it, you can actually put a a hole at the top of it, let it dry really well, and you can use those as ornaments. Um, you can also take these and stick things together and decorate it. You could use craft sticks to hold it. I'm just going to do shapes with my hand to make a little house. I just pinched it. If you've ever made a pinch pot, it's kind of like a pinch pot. I'm just going to do this. If you want it to be taller, then like I said, the sticks would be a great helper. Okay, this is the sides of my house. There you go. And then I could add stuff to it. I might use pipe cleaners to help the structure and squeeze it together so you can build around pipe cleaners. You could decorate it with flowers. You can make a roof if you want by rolling out a piece like this. This is pretty fun. When I was, when I was um, teaching class before, we would spend a lot of time playing with this stuff because it's fun in a lot of ways. So I could hold, try and hold my roof on that way, or I could put it underneath. And if it breaks apart, all you do is squeeze it back together. Yeah, that could use it maybe a craft stick under it but it it works great to build different things out of and also the other thing I really like to do is get my toy dinosaurs and play with it play with the toy dinosaurs in the play-doh this is really fun to play in so thank you for making art with me it's been a pleasure let's watch a video Here in Denmark, we have a saying to make soup from a sausage peg. <clears throat> That's this, the little stick on the scrunched up bit left over at the end. But what does this saying mean? Well now, who better to ask than the mice? For our leftovers are their feasts, and it just so happens they're having their annual banquet tonight. Well now, Miss Kitchen Mouse. Huh? Moldy bread, rancid bacon rind, and cow's milk three weeks Ooh. sour. Another excellent feast. And another huge sausage end with a sausage peg too. Wherever did you get it from? 
Oh, just an old storyteller friend, Your Highness. No one too close, I hope. For after tonight's spread, I've a good mind to marry you. Oh! Hmm. <laughs> um, if you were a princess, I mean. Hmm. Ah, you're talking of which, dear. It really is time you chose between these three eligible princesses. That is why I invited them here after all. Um, <clears throat> look, can't we talk about something else, Mother? I'm sorry, dear. You really must choose this year. Or stand down as king. You know the mouse rules. Oh, very well. <sighs> A respected rodents and venerable vermin, I have decided to choose who will be my queen by holding a contest. <gasps> you all know the saying, soup uh -huh. from a sausage peg. Oh. Well, whosoever shall go out into the world and bring me back the recipe for this fabled soup shall be my bride. <laughs> and, according to our ancient law scrolls, all royal contests must be made open to everyone. Whether highborn, common, or field mouse. Correct, princess? Uh, yes, sir. Um, that is the law, but... Very well. Then I declare this contest... Open! <laughs> oh. Oh. So, ladies, who's first? Oh, um... I am... Bye! And so, the first mouse princess headed north, in search of the recipe the Mouse King had requested. I am looking for a recipe because I want to make some soup out of a sausage peg. Ah, soup, you say? From a sausage peg like this one, you say? Ah? Huh? Mm-hmm. Garn! Never heard the like. Not round these parts. No wow! to you, strange lady mouse. Ooh. I say, that happens to be just the thing we're looking for. Uh, can we have it? My sausage peg? Hmm. Well, I do need it for my special quest, but I'll lend it to you if you like. Oh. Good Miss Mouse, you have shown us kindness, so we have it within our power to grant you a wish. Oh, I desire only to know the secret of making soup from my sausage peg. But we've just shown you. We took your humble peg from the end of some sausage and used it to make something wonderful. That's what soup from a sausage peg means. <sighs> But I was hoping for a recipe for the soup itself. Ooh. Uh, look, I really must fly. But just so you don't go home completely empty-handed. Bye-bye, Miss Mouse. Bye-bye. Oh. Days passed, and the first mouse princess made her way back to the Mouse King court. And so I could find no such recipe, Your Majesty. I may not be able to get soup from a sausage peg, but look what I can do! Oh. <gasps> violets! I'm allergic to violets! Uh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Um, next! <gasps> huh? 
not knowing where to start. The second princess did the sensible thing and went to ask her wise old grandmother. Hmm. Soup from a sausage peg, eh? Then become a poet, dear. For poets cook up all kinds of food for thought out of the tiniest crumbs of ideas. A poet? But how, Grandmother? Wisdom, imagination and feeling. Go out into the world and get those into you, dear, and you'll be on your way. Then a poet I shall be. Now go to the ant. Consider her ways and be wise. Princess Mouse, for we ants are indeed the wisest, best organised creatures of all. See that clumsy oaf there? No one will help him because every ant is taught to think of two things only, himself and how best to do exactly as I say. So, who do I go to if I want to get the most wisdom into me? Why, me, of course, for I am the source of all wisdom round here. I see. Well, uh, thanks very much. Oh. Hmm, wisdom tastes a bit like chicken. Having gotten wisdom into her, the princess now went to the wood nymph in search of imagination. Plucked from the wing of my fantasy friend, imagination himself, a poet's quill. Don't mind if I do. Mm. Oh. <gasps> oh. And then lastly, to literally get feeling into her, she went back to the library, where she devoured every romantic novel. <laughs> First few chapters were great, but the ending needed more salt. Eventually, she returned to the Mouse King's court. And so, Your Majesty, the secret of getting soup from a sausage peg is me! For I am now a special poet. <laughs> and I can cook up beautiful stories and songs. Thusly. <laughs> Uh, ooh. Uh, next! And so, the third mouse princess travelled to the other side of town. Now, now, children, you're not starving. I fed you all earlier, so stop making so much soup out of a sausage peg. Soup out of a sausage peg? And so... She climbed up to find out more. Uh, 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 hello? Did someone up here mention making soup from a sausage peg? Well, hello there. I'm an owl. My children and I eat moles, voles, shrews, and mice. Well, isn't that a coincidence? <laughs> because I'm a very rare kind of owl-eating mouse. <laughs> well, I don't swallow that for one moment, Miss Mouse. But I admire your spirit. Come on in and meet the children. In you go. Oh! 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 So the mouse helped the owl train her children for life in the outside world. Oh! <laughs> oh, oh that tickles! <laughs> no, no, children. Pounce with your feet, then peck with your beaks. And in return, the owl told the mouse all she needed to know about making soup from a sausage peg. Back at the mouse court, the third princess told the king all she had learnt. And so, Your Majesty, the truth is, no such actual recipe exists. 
It's just a saying, meaning everything and nothing, depending on how you use it. Which means, dear, this whole contest itself has been soup from a sausage peg. So, you must choose a bride now, or stand down as king. Very well, Mother. Well, I suppose I could use someone to do my paperwork for me. Wait! Oh! Your Majesty! She's wrong! Oh, there no. is a recipe! And I know it! Oh. Huh? Oh. You do, Miss Kitchen Mouse? Phew! Um, then by all means, show us! In fact, there's only three ingredients to it, sire. The first is boiling water. The second, of course, is a sausage peg. And the third? Well, child, out with it. Royal mouse tail man. Oh. <gasps> oh! You just stick your tail into the boiling oh. water, keep swishing it round for an hour or so, and it makes the most delicious soup known to mouse kind. And you're sure it has to be royal, Mouse Tail? Oh, yes, Your Highness. Only yours or the Queen Mother's will do. Uh, uh... Oh! Uh... Well, I, for one, am prepared to take her word for it. How about you, Mother? Uh... <laughs> yes, well, we only wanted to know what the recipe is, didn't we? We don't have to taste it. My thinking exactly, Mother. Which means Miss Kitchen Mouse has won the contest. <laughs> well, clever Miss Kitchen Mouse, will you be my queen? Gladly, sire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And the king married the kitchen mouse. And to this very day, mice the world over still argue about how this sausage peg soup might actually taste. Which is all a bit of a soup from a sausage peg in itself, don't you think? <laughs> Thank you for watching this episode with us. If you'd like to see other episodes in the Fairy Tales and Fantasy series or others in our Children's Hour series, you can do so on our YouTube channel. Until next time. Mm -hmm.